I'm glad to welcome you on board to this course. This is going to be a networking basics tutorial, part one. And we're going to have so many series of this course or parts of this course discussing all the ideas to know about the basics of computer networking. So you are welcome on board. So this is going to be an exciting journey for both of us. A quick who am I? I am Mitchell by name. You can also call me Mr. Fix It. I am a husband and a father. I'm an ethical hacker and a consultant. I'm a senior network and security engineer. And I've also got a couple of cybersecurity and IT related certifications. Well, who is this course for? This course is for anyone that is not yet ready for higher courses like Microsoft Certified Solution Associate or Cisco Certified Network Associate. So those coming into this field of IT from probably other non-IT related fields might find Microsoft MCSA or Cisco CCNA a bit more complex. So those that want to switch from their present job or career to IT, probably now you are working elsewhere as an accountant or you are working as a business administrator and you want to make a switch to IT, then this course is also a good starting point for you. We also have a couple of guys that want to come into the field of cybersecurity, but they have no previous IT knowledge or IT background. And then this is a great point to start your IT career. So what do you need to know for you to be able to benefit from this course? Well, you do need to have the knowledge of Windows operating systems like Windows 7, Windows 8, or 10, and you do need to also own your own personal computer. These are requirements that you need to meet to really benefit from this course. Well, in this course, we are going to cover the following. So we are going to keep it as short as possible. We have quite a number of topics that we are going to cover in this series as far as networking basics is concerned, from the very beginning to at, at least intermediate level. So we are going to look at what exactly is a network, what are the advantages and disadvantages of computer network. We look at network topologies, we look at network protocols, and finally we cap this uh, presentation with network architecture. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to walk you through the from nothing to a somebody in computer networking in the course of this series. So we're going to have quite a couple of other videos coming up after this very one that will be concentrating on other topics as far as basics of computer networking is concerned. And we're also going to have a couple of hands-on where we'll be setting up a wired and both wireless network and doing all the necessary troubleshooting. So let's begin. Computer networking is the practice of linking two or more computing devices together for the purpose of sharing information and resources. This is a typical example of a computer network so you see in this diagram here, we have a network switch in the middle of the diagram and every other device on the network appears to be connected to the switch. So we we'll have devices like access um, laptops, desktops, printers, and also servers connected to the network switch. And we also have a wireless access point or a router that gives 
access to wireless devices like mobile phones, laptops, also on the network. And you see the wireless router here is connected to the switch as well. And that will enable those in wireless network to be able to access printers and servers and other devices in the wired network. And for the whole of these devices on this network to be able to access the internet, you need to have a modem or a router placed in front of your switch. And this is a device that is going to connect the entire devices you have to your ISP in order for those devices to access the internet. So in a more advanced network, you probably will have another device in front of your router, which is a firewall from notable firewall vendors like Checkpoint, Palo Alto, WatchGuard, Cisco, and even Fortinet. So that is what a computer network is all about, linking two or more computing devices. And there are purposes for this, which we are going to see in the next slide under the advantages of computer networking. So what are exactly are the benefits of having a computer network? As we mentioned on the offset, onset, we said is for file and information sharing as well as resource sharing. So file and document sharing is very, very important aspect of computer networking where you have a particular document that you need your end users to be able to access on the network, instead of locking that resource on your personal computer, you put it out on a centralized device as a server, and everybody that is granted access to that document will be able to access it. Information sharing is very, very common today. The amount that at which people share information on social networking sites like Facebook, very amazing. And then there are other aspects of information sharing like electronic mails, video conferencing, streaming, and all that. All of these information sharing platforms wouldn't have been possible if there is no computer network. So other hardware devices like printers, etc., can also be shared amongst many different users on the network. So instead of you having individual printers connected to individual, individual users' devices, like for instance in a small office or in a small company that I visited, the top management staffs all have their own printers connected to their, physically to their devices. Okay, so in order to make these hardware devices um, more efficient and be able to manage the resources that is at the disposal of this company, you can get a network printer that is connected straight to the network and everybody on the network, every staff should be able to print through that printer. So with a network in place, it's possible to share resources like hardware. We can also share other resources on the network like software if we are able to have a network in place. And this requires that if you want to install like for instance an antivirus software on a network or on a couple of devices or even in all your devices on the network, you don't necessarily need to do it manually. Why not? Because you have a network in place so you have a server on that network, you could use the server to automate the installation of this antivirus software on all end users' devices. So software can also be shared amongst different users on a network. So these are the uh, some of the many advantages that a computer network can provide. And these are the reasons why companies, no matter how small, should uh, embrace the idea of having their own network. But there are a few disadvantages that come with having a computer network. One is the expensiveness of network cabling. So if you are building like medium to large networks, you are going to have to spend quite a lot of money in network cabling installation and sometimes these cables go wrong, they maybe uh, got broken, 
you are going to maintain them and you are going to replace them. So all of these expenses make it kind of like a disadvantage to especially a small business that have a low budget. Well, if you have a server on the network and uh, probably you don't have a backup server, you are going to run into, into an issue where you have a fault with that server and this will prevent people from being able to uh, access anything on the network. And um, a fault with the server will prevent the whole network from working. It simply means that if such a server is down, people will not be able to access their resources or their folders, their files, their documents, and that is going to impact negatively on their job. But this can be averted by the company having a backup server whereby the primary server is down, the backup server is able to take up and the end users will not experience any downtime. But again, the same thing comes to, uh, uh, everything comes down to cost again, which means that the company will have to still spend money to have a backup server. So, what are the other disadvantages? Well, when you have a computer network and you want unauthorized access well, prohibited to that network or the resources on that network, then you have to take some security measures. So these security measures will come obviously with a cost because you are going to have to buy security appliances like firewall or a UTM device and this firewall is going to cost uh, the company quite, uh, depending on the type of firewall they are going for and the licenses they need to install on the firewall, is going to cost them quite some couple of dollars, you know? So that still boils down to cost. So I think basically the Disadvantages of having a computer network is all about cost. Okay, so network topology is the next item on our list. We are going to look at the different uh, types of network topology. We have physical network topology, and we also have logical network topology. Because we want to keep this presentation as short as possible, we are not going to cover these two types of network topologies here. We are going to only focus on physical network topology. And then in our subsequent video, we are going to cover the logical network topology. So let's look at the physical network topology. The physical network topology or the physical topology of a network, whichever way you want to put it, refers to the layout of cables, computers, and other peripherals on the network. So it simply refers to how computers and other devices on the network are connected. Just think of a network topology as a map. So maybe possibly use a Google map and just as a map shows the layout of various roads and streets within the neighborhood, the network topology is like a map that shows how devices on the network are connected we actually have uh, common types of physical topologies like boss topology, ring topology, and star topology. We are going to take a quick look into each of these common types of physical topology, and we are starting with boss topology. With the boss topology, all workstations are connected directly to the main backbone that carries the data. Traffic generated by any computer will travel across the backbone and be received by all workstations. If we take a look at the artwork or the diagram below, you are going to see that we actually have a single backbone cable that is terminated at both ends. And then we have nodes or devices connected to these backbone cables like node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4. And how this works is that if node 1, for instance, is transmitting to node 3, then every other devices or nodes on the network will receive the transmission. 
So for instance, in the case here, we have node two, um, sorry, node one, and communicating or transmitting to node three, it simply means that node two and node four will also receive that transmission. So we also have to note that this is very, very suitable for a small network, the network of two to five computers. And the more you add devices to this network, the more issues you are likely to have. So that is the concept behind bus topology. And the next on our list is ring topology, which is actually developed by the IBM. In the ring topology, computers are connected on a single circle of cable. Unlike the bus topology, there are no terminated ends in the ring topology. The signals travel around the loop in one direction and pass through each computer, which acts as a repeater to boost the signal and send it to the next computer. So that's what ball, um, ring topology is all about. And then if you take a look at this diagram below, it simply helps us to understand how devices are connected in a ring topology. So computers or devices in this network are connected in a ring format. And as you can see here, whichever computer or device that is transmitting must be the one that has a token. So devices in this topology have to pass token around and the device that has a token will be the one to transmit data. Now this is a plot or a mechanism that is used to avoid collision from a calling in this network. So since two or more devices cannot have the token at the same time, it simply makes it difficult for them to have collision, since only the device that have the token is the one that can transmit data. So that is the ring topology concept. And then the next is the star topology. Well, in the star topology, star topology happens to be the most common type of network topology in today's network. Star topology is one of the most common network setups. In this star topology, every node connects to a central network device, typically a switch. So you just have something like this. So you have a switch from whichever vendor of your choice, could be Juniper Switch or Cisco, and you have all your devices on the network connect to the central device. So that is a star topology. Is one of the topologies that you will see in almost all the functional networks of today. So sometimes network engineers may come up with the idea of using more than a one topology when they are designing a network. And when more than a topology is used in a particular network, that becomes hybrid topology. As the case is below in the picture, you may have a couple of switches in your building. For instance, you have the first floor where you call network one here. And on the first floor, you have a switch where a couple of devices in that floor are connected to that switch. And in the next floor, maybe second floor, you have another switch that is network two. And you have, <coughs> excuse me, you have a couple of devices connected to that switch. And then let's say that in network one, we have like printers and servers connected to that switch. And there is a need for the employees on the second floor on network two to be able to access the resources running on that server in network one. Then we are going to use a crossover cable to connect the switch in first floor to the switch in second floor, thereby creating a bus topology. You'll remember that the switch in first floor and switch in second floor represent star topologies, and we are now linking up these two stars with a box, and that will give us what? Hybrid topology. So we are done with network topology, by discussing the three common types of physical topology, the bus, the ring, and the star. Let's now look at what is a network protocol. 
protocol specifies a common set of rules and signals that computers on the network use to communicate. In the local area network connection, for instance, most of the networks today use Ethernet. But Ethernet is not the only protocol that can be used to communicate amongst computers on the network. We have many other network protocols like L2TP, MPLS, PPP, Frame Relay, and a host of other network protocols which we are not going to cover in this first presentation. But in our subsequent presentation, we are going to ensure that all of them are covered. So we now take to the last of this presentation, which is network architecture. It's really important that as a network person, you understand the true network architecture. That is the two most commonly used network architecture in today's network. So first off, let's see what a network architecture is. Network architecture refers to how computers are organized in a system and how tasks are located between these computers. That is the definition of network architecture. So two of the most widely used types of network architecture are peer-to-peer -peer networking model and client-server networking model. And I want to quickly look at what is the difference between these two networking models or architecture. Let's start off with peer-to-peer. -peer. In a peer-to-peer -peer networking configuration, there is no server on the network and computers on the network simply connect with each other in a work group format in order to share files, printers, internet, and other resources on the network. So since there is no server on that network, the security of that network is kind of like in jeopardy because there is no centralized device that can be used to control or restrict what end users or computers are able to do on the network. So you you commonly this kind of network is found in a home networking setup. In most cases, you have less than a dozen computers on the network. So the major setback of this is that it has no security. So for companies that need security, that security is a priority for them, they don't need this type of architecture. So that is peer-to-peer, -peer. but one good thing about peer-to-peer -peer is that it is, not, it is cost effective. So it's not as expensive as client-server model. So let's look at the client-server model. Just look at a, an artwork or a picture here that helps us to see what peer-to-peer -peer is. So you just have a couple of devices connected to the switch and on that network, there is no server. So now let's look at the client-server model. In client-server networking model, there is usually an anti-domain controller. So we are looking at, for instance, a Microsoft Windows domain controller to which all of the computers log on. This server can provide a variety of services on the network including mail, web, file sharing, printer access, as well as ensuring security across the network. So this networking model is much more expensive to set up compared to peer-to-peer, -peer, but the security that peer-to-peer -peer model lacks, this one provides. So you are likely going to find this kind of configuration in corporate environments where network security is essential. So this is an example of a client-server model. So you see a network uh, diagram below here, and you can see here that we have a server on the network. And on that server, we can control who should do what on the network. We can even control when users are allowed to log on to their computers. You can even set password policies, making it possible for all the users to have a strong password that they use to access their system. 
and a host of other policies we could set on the server, which will all be lacking in a peer-to-peer -peer model. So we have covered the four items that we have on this part one of networking basics. In part two of the networking basics, we shall be moving into the world of OSI model and TCP IP. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.